Okay, so I wanted to do a, a, a small, short uh, length, um, a simple repair job um, because I've been getting requests for this sort of thing. So, and we have here is a, a chip on a plate. This is about the size of a quarter. And um, I'm going to show you how we fix something like that. So, um, first thing you're going to do is make sure it's all clean. If, if there's any schmutz or whatever in here, uh, use chemicals or soap and water or whatever. Clean it up. Uh, make sure this is bone dry before you start. <clears throat> and then you want to fill that with some sort of epoxy putty. Um, in this case, I'm using the A plus B putty that I normally use. And uh, mix it up and just get your spatula and spread it into there. Gonna, you don't want to just fill it. You want to press it into it. Make sure you're getting good adhesion, getting it to stick. And you want to overfill it. Essentially, you're, you don't want to make it level right off the bat. Just fill it in higher than you need it and that way you can pare it plane it down to the correct level more accurately and in this case it doesn't wrap around to the front I'm using water on my tool to keep it from sticking it helps smooth it out too and then I'll curve this around Press it into place so that it seals nice and tightly. And so this will be the first stage. This is, this is A plus B is I use on big chips like this or missing pieces because it's very, very hard. Much harder than milliput. And then once I file this down flat, if there is any little chipping or anything around the edge of this, we'll use milliput because it can do the fine lines. But this is the first stage. Okay, it is the next day, and this uh, A plus B fill is rock hard, ready to plane down. So I have um, a set of uh, fine files. These are steel files. And as long as you're not too aggressive, uh, this won't hurt the glaze on this sort of porcelain, or on this uh, ceramic. And so we just start filing and you basically want to keep the curvature of this we don't want to flatten that out when we get to it because you could flatten across that c-shaped hole we want to keep this curvature be conscious of that so and it's fairly easy to do because i'm only taking off a little, very little bit of uh, epoxy at any given time so it's not like it's going to sneak up on you and you went too far and then even if you do all you do is add a little more and build it up again but let's try not to do that so um the other thing is when you do this your file will get clogged up fairly often and you won't get much filing done so that's why i keep a little stainless steel wire brush and that's for cleaning out the file. And you just do this every couple of minutes. Keep your files clean. Well, I've got it almost cleaned down to the surface level. And uh, you're going to need a finer fill on top of this. Okay. 
All right, so I've got this nearly planed down to the level I need, and I can see there's some roughness along here, or along the edge. This, this is the kind of thing you expect when you're doing this. This is considered a rough fill. Sometimes it does it, but we've got this rough edge to the hole, and we're going to need to go over this once I'm done leveling this in a few minutes. And then we'll need to uh, put milliput in here along this edge to get this uh, fill nice and smooth. Okay, I mixed up some milliput and we'll fill in the edge of this. Okay, so uh, it's the next day, the milliput is cured, and we'll file that down. to clean my file. And my porcelain sandpaper for all repair. Now that is ready for paint. Okay, so I want to point something out here. Um, this looks like a white plate to most people, but as you can see, this milliput is very, very white, bright white. It's like titanium white, like uh, white paint. Um, so this tells you what is really white. And so when we mix this color to match this plate, this if you have this white on here, you can see what you need to add to the white to get this color. So you can see that whether it leans toward a buff or a blue or green or whatever shade you need to add to the color to make it match. And so we can see there's a this has a, a creamy color to it. And uh, yeah. so I just want to point that out that that's a helpful hint to, uh, when you mix the colors. So um, we're ready to do a cold glaze on this because we're getting ready to paint it. I never show this step, so I thought I would show it. Um, I already put one uh, layer of cold glaze on it, and I sanded it so you can see it's shiny. This is dull where we sand it, and now I'm going to shoot some more cold glaze on it. And the, fan, the noise you're hearing is the fan starting up. So I've uh, pre-mixed my color that I'm going to use on this, and um, this is an off-white. It's somewhere between bright white and this buff color. This, these are uh, golden 
acrylic, high flow acrylics. Um, you can use them straight out of the bottle into your airbrush. And so this color is roughly halfway between these two colors. Not quite, it's a little more. Yeah, it's about halfway between. Anyway, I already mixed it, color matched it, I'm ready to go. Okay. He is light coat. So before I get too th the paint on here too thick, I want to dry it real quick. Okay, so I'm going to put my final cold glaze on this. Good heavy coat. And I'll do that two or three times and then we'll buff it up. I'm not going to show every one of those. Just all right. Now I've had I have uh, several coats of uh, cold glaze on this repair. Right about here is where the chip is was. <laughs> so uh, we painted it and we put several coats of cold glaze on this. And now I'm going to get ready to buff this up to shine like the glass like finish on this. Right now you can't see it in the camera because uh, many reasons one is that there's different you can't see it, the detail in this um, what I wanted to show you was the orange peel the difference between the orange peel of a sprayed on finish and the uh, original finish which is almost like glass it actually is glass it's fused melted glaze is glass on top of here and so I'm going to go through my micro mesh to buff this up and you will not know the difference between where the repair area is and where the original area is. The transition will be invisible. And to achieve that, I use micro mesh to buff this up. And I work through, uh, here they are right here. And I work through, in this case today, I'm going through four different grits from 2400 through 3600 to 4000. 600 and then I will use a buffing compound on a, a cotton swab or a cotton uh, makeup uh, remover pad to buff it up so I work my way down through these these grits and uh, and I do that by hand and so here I go so the idea is to take the orange peel out and what I'm doing is I am working from the middle of that area towards the edge. You want to work away from the edge so that I'm planing down this to zero. If I went the other way, I would be pulling up the edge. So I'm going to just buff this with 2400. And this will take the graininess out of the um, orange peel leveling it off 
there'll be some fine scratches in here um, but we'll get the grit out and I am actually pulling on I'm only pressing down one direction over here I was pushing down on the out here I'm pulling on the out and I'm working away from the edge go out away from this I've got a quarter sized patch on this and I'm just going towards the edges till I find it well that's my 2400 I move up to 3600 same thing it goes quicker with each Successively lighter grit. It's already starting to get a little bit shiny. Again, I'm only pushing down on the one direction. I'm not rubbing back and forth here. Move up to four thousand, and this is where it starts to shine. Six thousand. And by now my edge is almost invisible. Really want to work the edge on this. So uh, this is what I'm using to uh, buff with the um, fine scratch remover. It's uh, cotton squares. Get them at the drugstore. And, you know, these are cheapo ones. They wear out pretty quickly. So, But they'll, they're functional. They work. You want a nice, soft... You can use cotton balls. I like these makeup pads. They work a little better. And this is a polishing compound. It's made for plastics, but uh, this acrylic finish on here is plastic, so it'll work. So I'm working my way out from the middle. First I'll start in the middle, circular motions, I buff, work my way to the edge. When I get to the edge, I pull away from the edge. And right now I can already see it's already shining up like glass and the edge transition completely disappears. Now this is impossible to tell where the cold glaze stops. Can you see how shiny that is? And that's it. So we're done. And this, the chip is actually right here. It's impossible to, to see the repair. So that's just a, a simple job complete from the beginning to the end, just fixing a chip and all the steps required to do that. This is what the front of the plate looks like. Just 
if you're interested. <laughs> Nothing fancy, it's, but it has great sentimental value to the owner, and we're going to get it back to them in uh, good condition.